Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, Jules, Philip and I review the Hasselblad H1 and H2. The Hasselblad H system is a 6x4.5 medium format camera system with autofocus that was first introduced at Photokina in 2002. Just like the Hasselblad x band it was developed together with Fujifilm and there's also the Fujifilm GX645AF version of this camera. The body is made by Hasselblad, the focusing um, sensor and screen are from Minolta while the lenses, meter finder and film bags are all made by Fujifilm. The H1 body's firmware can be updated to support all the features of the Hasselblad H2 and this is also the reason why we look at the two cameras together. Until recently, these Hasselblad cameras were one of the best kept secrets of professional film photographers and connoisseurs in the film community. There are also only very few reviews out there of the Hasselblad H system and we wanted to shed some light um, on that system and give it some room here on the channel. 6x4.5 is a really interesting format with a really nice aspect ratio that is well suited for portraits but also other purposes. It comes with high quality negatives and a pretty good film economy giving you 15 to 16 rolls out of, uh, shots out of a typical 120 roll. When thinking of the format, um, the camera, the first camera that comes to mind is the Contax 645. Um, and this one has become the weapon of choice of professional wedding photographers working with film, but unfortunately the camera has also become incredibly expensive in recent years. Well, of course it comes with wonderful card size lenses, um, most famously the 80mm f2. It also comes with a rather slow autofocus that um, often misses, unfortunately. On the more in the more affordable um, segment, um, you can think of the Mamiya 645 Pro TL or the Mamiya um, 645 AF, um, but also the Pentax 645. But the early Hasselblad H systems were not well known and relatively affordable until recently. Furthermore, especially for film shooters, it is a little bit tricky to get access to the system and to wrap your head around how it all fits together and what is really compatible and what is not. So which body, lens and film bag really fit together is a little bit tricky to figure out and we will discuss this in this video as well. Um, for instance, many people don't know that the current H6X um, that is still available new is also compatible with the film bags. Um, as you can see, this camera is really important to us and due to our hearts and we wanted to do a proper review, so we took it out on a photo walk in Ulm, but also into the studio for a portrait session with uh, Jacob um, from Most Wanted Models who are based in Munich and Hamburg to take a couple of portraits and to use the camera in an arena where it really shines. So let's take a closer look at the results and our findings. Before diving into the features, it is important to note from today's perspective that the Hasselblad H system does not replace the legendary Hasselblad V system, but rather complements it. The H system is a fast, modular, autofocus solution for studio use and other purposes and really great and reasonable film economy. 
And in contrast to the V system um, that is more manual, the Hasselblad H system comes with all sorts of advanced electronic features. The camera offers shutter speeds between 1 800th of a second and 18 hours. And for such longer exposures, the camera can automatically calculate the correct exposure and the required exposure and then use it. So there's no need to hold uh, the shutter open manually by holding down the release button of a cable release, for instance. The H system exposes 16 frames on a regular 120 film roll and beeps before the last frame, if you wish. The viewfinder is very bright and gives you 100% of the final image. Furthermore, there are different screens available, such as a grid to which we are switching here. There are also different finders, and the prism finder comes with a built-in flash, which is often ridiculed but also misunderstood, because the real purpose of this flash is to visually trigger um, other flashes in a studio setup via a master-slave combination. On the top side of the grip on the right of the camera is an illuminated LCD display that shows all the camera settings. Changing settings is quite intuitive and can be done via the two main wheels and um, the shutter release even serves as an OK button while in the menu. The camera offers different exposure modes and aperture priority, shutter priority and manual exposure but also program mode. Multiple exposures can also be set. There are three metering modes available, um, spot, center, and average. The camera even offers a built-in zone system metering, which can be particularly useful for landscape photography. So, um, for instance, it lets you take a spot reading of 18% gray um, on any element in the frame and then compare the difference to the sky or an element in the foreground. In addition, the display can be set to display exposure values, so EVs, as well, which is very helpful when you come from the Hasselblad V system. The camera features three different autofocus modes. Um, the focus modes include a manual mode with focus indication in the finder, a single shot AF, and of course a continuous AF. In darker situations, an additional red light goes off to help you focusing. The camera has a self-timer as well as bracketing and interval options. Um, furthermore, the camera is powered by three CR123A batteries um, and they are loaded into an insert which is attached to the removable grip. Alternatively, there's also a rechargeable lithium-ion battery uh, grip available. The H system also offers profiles, which can be quite convenient when shooting a wedding, for instance, and you need different sets of options um, for outdoor photography without flash, for instance, versus indoor photography, and you need to switch between the two different sets of settings quickly. This can be easily done via the profiles. The Hasselblad H system comes with 12 different lenses manufactured by Fujifilm but with built-in electronic leaf shutters designed by Hasselblad. The Fujinon branded lenses created for the GX645 version of the camera are also compatible. Originally the maximum shutter speeds in these lenses was uh, or were 1 800th of a second. Over time there were also lenses produced um, with a maximum shutter speed of 1 2000th of a second. These are marked with an orange square. The H1 and H2 bodies cannot make use of these faster shutter speeds. Only later bodies like the H5 work here. And now to the tricky part, compatibility in general. Because out of the 12 lenses available, only 9 can be used on the H1 and H2. And that is only the lenses starting with HC, not the ones starting with HCD. 
um, because only the HCD um, work, basically only the newer camera bodies like the H5X and the H6X let you use all the lenses. Plus, and now it's getting really complicated, the H2F, which I will explain in a minute. So um, the reason is that the HCD lenses were created and optimized for slightly smaller digital sensor sizes and Hasselblad being Hasselblad um, decided, okay, since these will vignette a little bit on film and we're selling to professional photographers here, we cannot make these available by default for um, film bags. So this kind of creates this whole mess and the H2F version was um, a special variant that was optimized for film use and only the Hasselblad um, digital bags, so no third-party digital sensors. And this is why Hasselblad felt confident in selling it anyways. So in other words, the H2 and H1 bodies are compatible with all the HC lenses, ranging from 35mm f3.5 to the legendary 120mm f4 macro, um, to all the way up the 300mm um, f4.5, um, and even the famous 50 to 110mm f3.5 to 4.5 zoom lens. And this last zoom lens might sound inferior at first glance, just looking at the specs, as it kind of uh, does not feature a constant aperture across all the focal length and also weighs 1650 grams. But make no mistake, this zoom lens is incredible and produces excellent results across um, all focal um, length and is really a go-to choice um, when it comes to lenses for Hasselblad um, uh, photographers like, uh, for instance, Annie Liebowitz, um, Karl Lagerfeld or Tyler Shields, as you can see here. The Hasselblad H system comes with all sorts of accessories. Let's take a look at the bags first. Of course it supports digital bags by manufacturers like Hasselblad itself, but also Kodak, Phase One and many others. Looking in the film direction, you can actually shoot Polaroids with it, with an HMI 100 Polaroid um, instant um, pack film bag, and of course a regular medium format um, film bag that we have here. Interestingly, this very film bag um, has remained the same since the introduction of the camera system and was available to purchase new until fairly recently. These HM16-32 film bags use a built-in dark slide which can be opened and closed via the knob here on the side. And as is common, the film inserts the port um, 120 and 220 films and the barcoded films are even recognized and the ISO is set automatically by the film bag. The ISO settings can also be changed manually and the ISO as well as the film type are displayed here on the LCD. And the frame number can be shown as either upward or downward counting depending on your preferences and if you're in a darker situation you can press the button here on the back in order to light up the display. And this also means that the film bag, of course, has a CR2032 coin battery um, and draws some power from it there. But what is interesting is that um, the film bag only draws power from, the, um, from this battery when it's um, not attached to the body. Once it's attached, it takes its um, power from the body battery. 
In case you detach the film back with a flat battery mid-roll, this is a little bit problematic because then um, it will not uh, wind your film anymore when you reattach it um, and it also loses all the information about the frame number. Another really important accessory is the CF adapter, which makes it possible to shoot all the card size C lenses from the V system on an H um, camera. So this is a beautifully designed precision made um, piece that only weighs around 140 gram. An integrated processor for data conversion transfers the information from the lens, um, from the V system lens to the H camera body. And of course, um, only certain information can be transferred and is then available um, as a lens control function. But um, so autofocus and continuous drive are obviously not available, but the autofocus confirmation system of the H um, camera, for instance, um, can be used here when you manually focus a V system um, lens. And this, of course, can be really, really helpful um, to get an indication in the finder when your focus is spot on. Another noteworthy accessory is the tilt shift adapter HTS um, 1.5. Um, um, it is designed for many of the wider lenses, so the HCD 24mm, 28mm, the HC 35 and 50mm and 80mm, but even up to HC 100mm lenses and offers both a tilt and a shift functionality, which is particularly useful for shooting um, architecture, for instance, and similar objects where you really want to avoid distorted lines. Um, so this is really great and um, okay, yeah, is certainly on par with a more complex tilt and shift camera setup. In addition to the prism finder, there's also a waist level viewfinder available, which makes the camera much more compact and also resemble a little bit um, the V system, which is of course really nice to have these cameras next to each other with a waist level viewfinder. So what are our personal impressions? Jules purchased this camera in order to better photograph his first child. And his original research kind of led him down that path of, okay, what are fast, medium format, out of focus cameras? Then of course, also looking in the Hasselblad direction as a huge fan of the Hasselblad V system, is there anything in that direction? And he stumbled upon the H1 and H2. And, According to him, it really took some time and research to understand the system and the compatibility between the different lenses and bodies and to, to wrap your head around it. But once you do, the whole system makes a lot of sense and is also really um, a lot of fun and, of course, great quality. And this is probably the main point here. The camera offers a wonderful ergonomic handling, a really bright viewfinder and a reliable fast autofocus that is almost on par with today's digital offerings that we have. Um, so, and most importantly, um, the camera also creates only smooth and really pleasing sounds. Um, so in stark contrast to my Mamiya 645 Pro TL, which made really jarring sounds, especially when rewinding the film um, after you completed a roll or even just the regular shutter release um, sound. It's, it's just very different from that very soft and nice sound that the Hasselblad H system creates. Um, many of the easy to reach buttons can be remapped to a function of your desire and overall the camera handles really, really nicely and comes with great er ergonomics. Um, and if you don't have this heavy zoom lens attached, it's also fairly compact in terms of size. You can also feel the Hasselblad and Fujifilm quality. Um, the well-manufactured components fit perfectly into each other and what really stands out is of course the quality of the lenses um, that are extremely sharp and offer really high resolution, great color rendering and really live up to the higher price points at which they are coming. 
The camera also works wonders for portraits and fashion photography and I find myself often um, asking Jules whether I can kind of borrow or loan the camera for a week or so um, and he patiently hands it over to me unfortunately um, and what is really nice of course is that um, to kind of close the circle here uh, the camera also works wonders for Jude's original intention of uh, photographing his son, especially if he's moving around and getting excited. You can see that in these images here, the, the camera is perfect for these kind of situations where you need a fast, reliable autofocus, um, um, automatic metering and everything, and it just is spot on and gets you perfectly exposed, sharp negatives. Um, so really, really great and reliable camera. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and our review of the Hasselblad H1 and H2. And I'd like to end the episode with a quote by Roger Harrison from the Film Shooters Collective. I think the Hasselblad H system gets overlooked by film users. It tends to be associated with digital photography, but the H1 makes an excellent film camera. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.